This video is a continuation of lesson 1.5. To find the limit as x goes to negative 2 of f of x plus g of x, we will first use our limit properties to split this into two separate limits. So this will become the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x plus the limit as x approaches negative 2 of g of x. And now this becomes more manageable. We can look on the graph and see as x is approaching negative 2, y is approaching 4 for f of x. That means that the limit of f of x as x goes to negative 2 is 4. And on our other graph, which is g of x, the limit as x goes to negative 2 is negative 2. So we have 4 plus negative 2, which is 2. The second example is very similar. First, we'll split it apart. So this will become limit as x goes to 2 of f of x minus limit as x goes to 2 of 3 g of x. And I can actually split this one up even further apart using the multiplication property. So this one, will, I will further split this part into limit as x approaches 2 of 3 times the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. So now all I need to do is look at my graphs and determine what is the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. Looks like on my graph of f of x, x is going to 2, f of x is going to 0, so this is 0. Then I look on my g of x graph, I'm going to do this, this side of the multiplication first. The limit as x approaches 2 of g of x is 2. And this one I don't need to look at my graphs at all. Its limit as x approaches 2 of 3, which is just 3. So I have 0 minus 6, which is negative 6. This is a very similar example, but instead of being given a graph, we're given the actual functions. For this first one, first I will split it apart. And now I will evaluate what each of those limits actually is. So instead of writing limit of f of x as x goes to 19 thirds, since this is a continuous function, I can use direct substitution and plug in 19 thirds directly. So this becomes 7 minus 2 times 19 thirds. And then for g of x, this is also a continuous function. So what I can do is just directly plug in 19 thirds again. And now I just need to do some simplifying here. And I get that my answer is 1.3 repeating. This next example is a little bit different because at the end here, so we're being asked to find a limit over here, but then at the end, um, we just have kind of stuck onto the end f of 4. And it's very important to remember that actually evaluating what a function is at an x value is different than evaluating the limit. So first I'm going to break this first part apart into my two limits so that I can evaluate And now I can plug in the various values that I need to. So I know that limit as x approaches negative 7 of 2 is just 2. For limit of g of x as x approaches negative 7, I'm going to do, I'm going to bring down g of x. But instead of writing x, I'll write negative 7. Since it's a continuous function, I can use direct substitution. So this becomes 3 times negative 7 plus 30. Minus limit of f of x as x approaches 7. Again, I'm just using direct substitution. It'll become 7 minus 2 times negative 7. And I'm going to protect that all in parentheses down here. And then lastly, f of 4. Here, I don't need to worry about whether the function is even continuous because I'm just plugging it in and seeing what is the actual y value at f of 4. So it's 7 minus 2 times 4. And now I just need to evaluate. And my answer for this one is negative 14. In this example, we're going to be looking at composition of functions with limits. And in case you forgot what composition of function is, composition of functions is just when we have something like g of f of x or maybe f of g of x. So with composition of functions, when we're finding limits, the first step is always to take the limit of the innermost thing. 
So in this case, the innermost thing is f of x. So I'm going to find the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. I go up to my graph. As x is approaching 2, y is approaching negative 2. I have another value down here, but remember, I don't care what the actual value is. I'm just looking at what the function is approaching as x approaches 2. And that is negative 2. So now I have limit of f of x as x goes to 2 is negative 2. And this is where it gets a bit challenging. Now, instead of taking the limit as x goes to 2 of g of x, what we need to do is take the limit of g of x as x goes to negative 2, because that's what we just got for this function over here. So you take your answer for the innermost thing, and that's your new value for your limit. So we, the limit of g of x as x approaches negative 2 is negative 9, according to my graph. So that means that my overall limit is negative 9. Let's take a look at the second example of composition of functions. Remember, we always start with what's on the inside. So I'm going to start with the limit as x goes to 2 of g of x. I'll find that on the graph. As x is going to 2, g of x is going to negative 7. And then my next step is going to be to find the limit of f of x as x goes to negative 7. Now, my graph actually doesn't extend to negative 7 all the way over here, but I am given the equation for the graph up here. It's a multi-part function. It's negative x squared plus 2 for x not equaling 2 and negative 5 for x equaling 2, which makes sense because the only, the only discrepancy here is when x is equal to 2. It's down at negative 5 instead of at negative 2, where it looks like it should be. So in order to find the limit of f of x as x goes to negative 7, Negative 7 is not equal to 2, so I'm going to use this top equation, and I'm going to use direct substitution. So I'm going to plug in 7 for x. It'll be negative 7 squared plus 2, which is negative 49 plus 2, which is negative 47. So that means that the limit of f of x as x goes to negative 7 is equal to negative 47, which is the limit of this overall function. Here's another composition of functions example. These are some facts that we're given, but we're ultimately asked, what is the limit as x approaches 7 of g of 2 f of x? Remember that we always find the innermost limit first. So I'm first going to look for the limit as x approaches 7 of f of x. Now, this is one of my given statements. The limit of f of x as x approaches 7 is negative 6. So I know that this is negative 6. Um, however, inside these parentheses, it's not just f of x, it's 2 f of x. So I'm going to multiply negative 6 by 2, which is negative 12. And this is what I'm going to put as I find the limit of g. So the limit of g of x as x goes to negative 12. Now I need to look for this in my givens. It's right up here. Limit of g of x as x goes to negative 12 equals negative 4. I'm not given a lot of information about these functions up here, but I'm given enough that I can work with this limit problem. So that means that my overall answer is negative 4. This is a bit of a trickier example, and you'll see why in just a moment. As I'm going to evaluate the limit as x goes to 5 of f of x plus g of x, my first thing that I'm going to do is split it into two separate limits. Now I can evaluate. The limit of f of x, which is this graph, this is f of x, as x approaches 5, well, if we look down here at the graph, we've got a bit of a weird situation going on here. This is a jump in a piecewise function. As we approach from the right side, it looks like f of x is approaching negative 3, but as we approach from the left side, f of x is approaching negative 4, and that means that the overall limit does not exist. So we have DNE plus the limit of g of x as x goes to 5. If we look at the limit of g of x as x is going to 5, we have another situation where we have something different on the left side than on the right side, which means that this is another situation where the limit of g of x as x goes to 5 does not exist. So we're getting does not exist plus does not exist. You may think that the answer should be just overall this limit does not exist, 
but there's actually something that we can do when we have a situation like this. Maybe you're getting like DNE plus three, DNE minus four, DNE times eight, like any of those situations where you have DNE plus minus times something, that means that you need to do a little bit more analysis. And what I mean by that is that you need to separately evaluate the left-sided and the right-sided limits. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to evaluate the limit as x goes to five from the left side of f of x, and I'm going to evaluate the limit as x goes to five from the left side of g of x. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find the left side limits of both of these functions. A left side limit of f of x as x approaches five, coming in from the left side, that is negative four. Limit of g of x as x approaches five from the left side, coming in from the left side, x approaches negative five. And since I'm asked to do limit of f of x plus g of x, what I need to do is add these two together. So this is the f of x one, this is the g of x one. I have negative four plus negative five, which is negative nine. That is my overall left-sided limit. Now I need to find my overall right-sided limit. If my right-sided limit matches my left-sided limit, that is my new limit. But if it doesn't, then the limit really does not exist. So I'm going to find the right-sided limit as x approaches five of f of x and g of x. With my f of x graph, as I approach x equals five from the right side, y is approaching negative three. And on g of x, as I approach x equals five from the right side, y is approaching negative four. Now I need to add them together since it was originally asking for f of x plus g of x. So I do negative three plus negative four, which is negative seven. So if my overall left-sided limit matches my overall right-sided limit, that means that the limit is that number. But negative nine does not equal negative seven, so the overall limit in this case does not exist. This next example is almost exactly the same, but instead of adding the limits, we're going to subtract them. And I've already broken it into two separate limits, limit of f of x as x goes to five minus limit of g of x as x goes to five. So I already know from my previous problem that this is going to produce, limit of f of x as x goes to five is going to produce does not exist. And limit of g of x as x goes to five is going to produce does not exist. So I'm getting DNE minus DNE. Remember, when you are getting something that does not exist in a limit like this, that means that you need to do further analysis. Analyze the left-sided limits and the right-sided limits. So for my left-sided limits, I'm going to need to find the limit as x goes to five from the left side of f of x, and the limit as x goes to five from the left side of g of x. From the left side, I actually know it from my previous problem, but I'll work it out one more time. From the left side, as x approaches five, y approaches negative four. On g of x, as x approaches five, from the left side, y approaches negative five. But then instead of adding these two together, as I did in the previous problem, now I'm going to subtract them because this was asking for the limit of f of x minus g of x. So I do negative four minus negative five, which is one. Now I'm going to take a look at the right-sided limits. Limit as x approaches five from the right side of f of x and limit as x approaches five from the right side of g of x. f of x, I already solved this one earlier, it's negative three and I can look on my graph as I'm approaching from the right side, it's negative three. And g of x as I approach x equals five from the right side is negative four. And then I do f of x minus g of x, negative three minus negative four, which is really negative three plus four, which is equal to one. Now, my left-sided limit equals my right-sided limit. That means that the overall limit for this problem, the limit as x approaches five of f of x minus g of x is equal to one. Let's try the same thing with a multiplication problem. This time we're doing limit as x approaches five of f of x times g of x. I've already broken it into my two separate limits, and I know from my past problems 
that the limit of f of x as x approaches 5 is d n e, and so is the limit of g of x as x approaches 5. So we get d n e times d n e. This should tell you further analysis is required. We need to evaluate the limit from the left side and the right side. So we'll find the limit as x approaches 5 from the left side of f of x. We know that that one is negative 4. The limit as x approaches 5 from the left side of g of x. We know that is negative 5. And now we do negative 4 times negative 5 because that's what our internal function in here was asking. Negative 4 times negative 5 is 20. That is our overall left-sided limit. Now we do the right-sided limit. Limit as x approaches 5 from the right side of well, I guess I'm doing g of x first here, um, and then limit as x approaches 5 from the right side of f of x. g of x is negative 4, f of x is negative 3, negative 4 times negative 3 is 12, and since 20 is not equal to 12, that means that this overall limit does not exist. If we got something like 20, for the right-sided limit, then that would mean that the overall limit was 20 because when those numbers are the same, it means that the limit does exist. But since they're not the same, our overall limit doesn't exist.